Okay, so now that we've looked at lipid structure, we, we now need to look at lipid transport. So, one of the important things to remember about lipids is that they are hydrophobic. They are hydrophobic, and, and remember what that one of the reasons that we said that glucose was a, a good source or a good energy store or a good energy molecule be was because it could be easily transported in the blood because it was soluble in the transport medium, it's soluble in the blood, it's soluble in the plasma. Okay. However, if you think about lipids, they are another good store of energy. However, um, they are hydrophobic and so are not soluble they are not soluble in plasma. So they're not soluble in the transport medium. And so there needs to be a different way to transport them. So within a cell, what happens is that these uh, lipids, if they need to move, so remember, um, we have the liver. And the liver is the place where these are produced. So you've got dietary fats. In the liver, any excess energy, the liver is going to package it up as um, long-term storage in the form of triglyceride, and that triglyceride, that triglyceride needs to go to the um, adipose tissue. All right, so our fat storage cells, adipose cells. So various places in the body where uh, fat accumulates, these are basically where we are storing triglyceride, but the way it gets there is via the blood. So how does that happen? How do how how is triglyceride, uh, which is produced in the liver, how is it able to be transported in the blood when it is hydrophobic? This is important. And then how does it get to adipose cells and perhaps other tissues that utilize um, fats. So, uh, the way this occurs is by the formation within the liver and, and other tissues of structures called lipoprotein. Lipoprotein. And lipoprotein is essentially, you got your triglyceride, Okay, you've got your triglyceride molecules there. In the core of this. And surrounding that is phospholipid. Alright, so in the core you've got your cargo. And the cargo in this case is our triglyceride. That's our major energy storage molecule. Okay, so that's in the middle. Glycerol and three fatty acid chains. However, surrounding that, you have phospholipid. You have a layer of phospholipid. And this is not the same as a membrane because it's only one layer of phospholipid. But very importantly, the fatty acid chains, I hope you can see that the hydrophobic fatty acid chains are able to interact with the hydrophobic triglyceride cargo. And on the outside, we've got this hydrophilic, the hydrophilic heads of the phospholipids. Okay, so this makes a nice little package where it's kind of soluble on the outside, able to interact with the water of the plasma, but on the inside it's hydrophobic and it's able to then transport the triglyceride. Within, within the phospholipid layer you've also got protein hence the name lipoprotein. Okay? So within embedded in the layer of phospholipid, you've got you've got these uh, proteins. Okay, so this is a generalized kind of lipoprotein and this particle um, can be released into the plasma and it can and it can then take uh, triglycerides from the liver via the blood to 
the cells of the adipose and the adipose cells will have receptors for these things and will then be able to extract the uh, triglyceride from the lipoprotein. Also within the lipoprotein structure we are going to have cholesterol with the OH group sticking out. So cholesterol will also be here in there. So the main components of a lipoprotein are the triglyceride, uh, let's say cargo, so this is the th stuff that's being transported. The cargo is surrounded surrounded by um, phospholipid. This is not the same as a membrane, remember membranes are two layers of phospholipid, but this is surrounded by one layer of phospholipid and protein and a bit of cholesterol. Okay, now there are two types. There's two types of lipoprotein. So one is called HDL and the other one is called LDL. Now the key things about HDLs and LDLs is one that LDLs are primarily made in the liver. Okay, so when there's excess energy, LDLs are produced in the liver. They contain, they tend to contain more saturated fats, saturated fats, or sa um, so they contain more tri triglycerides that have saturated fatty acids. And they tend to have more cholesterol. Okay? And because they have more saturated fat and cholesterol, that's what makes them low density. Because the, the greater the proportion of, of lipid you have, the, great, the, the, the lower the density becomes. Okay? Hence why the reason why oil floats on water is because uh, you know, the oily component has got a lower density than the water. So, the greater the fat content, the lower the density, right? And this is the one, so the LDLs are what is linked to increased risk of CVD. HDLs are made. HDLs are produced in, primarily produced in adipose cells. Alright, so when you're using up fats... When it's time to use up your fat stores, adipose tissue cells produce HDLs so that the fats can go back to, or, or the fats can be lost from the adipose tissue, so lost from the where, wherever they're stored in your body, to be used up by your muscles, by your liver, uh, in respiration. Okay, um, So, adipose tissues produce HDLs. Um, to mobilize fats to be used up, whereas liver is producing LDLs to essentially store, okay? Storage of fat, and adipose is basically mobilizing fat to be used up, mobilizing, okay? It's got relatively less saturated fat, and therefore higher kind of unsaturated fat. Higher, higher unsaturated, and it's got a greater proportion of protein, and it's got less cholesterol. Okay, and then when we look at what the risk factors or or how the risk factors promote or increase the chance of cardiovascular disease, it, it will come back to how much HDL and LDL you've got in the blood. So the basic idea being that when, the, when you've got excess energy in your diet, the liver is producing LDLs. So the liver produces LDLs when you're storing energy around your body as fat. So you've got so much energy in your diet that the liver has got so, um, 
so so much uh, glucose or protein or or fat has been taken in in your diet and you're not really using it up so the liver has to process it into LDLs has to process that excess energy into LDLs to be stored okay but what your adipose so when when your when your energy requirements exceed your dietary intake that's when your adipose tissues mobilize that stored L, uh, stored fat as HDL. So at any one time, if you've got higher HDL compared to lower LDL, that means that overall you're using up your energy stores. However, if at any time you have uh, a lower HDL uh, amount compared to your LDL, that's when you know that you're storing more fat than you're using up. And it is this that's going to lead to obesity. Okay, because you're storing, you're storing more fat than you're using up. Okay, so that's the key point there. Let's move on.